Hey guys, so welcome back to the Great Ace of 32. Let's carry on where we left off. Court has been adjourned for the day. It's time for the second part of our investigation. It's the 23rd October, 2.41 p.m. Naruto's legal consultancy. Hopefully we've had some lunch with Susato, catching up at good times now that she's returned. And immediately Susato took us down in the middle of court. And no one even better than I. Everyone just, I guess, laughed at me. As I lay upside down trying to contemplate what exactly is going on with Hairbrain and why he was so adamant about giving himself up as the killer. Of course, it was to protect his hypothesis, thinking that his teleportation experiment actually worked, but I think we've established that no, it did not. Something was inside the balloon, the green balloon that didn't belong to Loon. So now I guess we're going to investigate the uh, experimentation stage one last time and See what else we can come up with. Oh, this room, it's been too long. It hasn't changed in the slightest, though. And it's been some six months, hasn't it? And that's a long time for things to say so familiar. Oh, well, I kept it like this, just in case you came back, you know? I want, didn't want you to forget where everything was. I don't know when you might return, and I wanted everything to be as you'd left it. But it has been some six months, it's true. I haven't done anything, basically. I, uh, I couldn't act as an attorney in court, so I just sat in my laurels, not even contributing to rent money. Which is kind of upsetting because Herlock Sholmes is posing as a wax model right now, trying to earn some extra dosh. So is your father alright, CZ? What happened? My father? Yes, Professor Mikotoba! I mean, it was half a year ago, but that's why you went back to Japan! Because of the telegram you received saying you'd fallen ill with a very high fever for some unknown reason. You like the way I conveyed this uh, exposition? <laughs> That's right. So I was surprised to learn you'd be coming back so soon. Surprised, but happy. He faked his illness like a school child trying to get out of school. <laughs> I think I wrote about it in my letter to you. That it was all a trick. My father's in fine health. And I'm obviously very relieved. About that part. Well, we're all delighted to have you back. It was quite by accident that I've been able to return to Europe, actually. Well, at least no one got murdered on your trip back here, so there's that. It's because of a very grand conference called the International Forensic Science Symposium. The International for Forensic... That, that's the same symposium Lord Strongheart mentioned. Anyway, I've arrived safe and sound, and all that matters is that I'm here now. After all, I haven't yet fulfilled my promise to you, Iris. Eh? You must tell us everything that happened while you were back in Japan. What did you do? You didn't happen to dress up like a male attorney and <laughs> defend someone in court, did you? Yes, of course, I shall. And uh, there's one other thing. Something you wrote in your letter that particularly grabbed my attention. About... You know who. About Kazuma. I know. I'll tell you all that I can. All right, please do. Uh, let me present my armband. See? I'm an attorney again. You're still taking good care of that armband, I see. I'm so pleased. Well, yes, just like you take care of your blue book. Feels like I wouldn't be me without it now, to be honest. Oh dear. There seems to be a thread coming loose just there. Look. I'd be only too happy to mend it for you, Mr. Narahodo. Oh, I thought it was a trick. I thought she was reaching in just to flip me over again for shits and giggles. <laughs> oh, thank you. I must have scraped it against something again. I'm always doing that. Yeah, clumsy me. Then take better care of it, please. Uh, it was all going so well until I ruined it. Come on, Reynosuke. Play the fifth man. All right, let's converse. Back in Britain. When I first arrived back in Japan, I really thought I'd never be allowed to return to Britain. But curiously, after that awful trial at the Supreme Court, Father's mood changed entirely. The awful trial? Oh, yes. For the murder of Giselle Brett. Ooh. You dressed as a man then, didn't you, Susie? Yeah, to... Ironically, defend someone against... The fact that she may have killed your father's killer. Oh, well, yes, since women are forbidden in the courtroom, I had no choice. Unless they're witnesses, I guess they're allowed then. Wow, amazing! I wish I'd seen it! Don't you, Rene? Uh, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> What's that meant to mean, Rinosuke? I want to play at being a lawyer now. I could wear a false moustache, maybe. I 
don't think any mustache could hide the fact that you're just ten years old, Iris. <laughs> There's something else I've been wanting to ask you, Mr. Sato. It's about the real reason why Professor Mikotoba summoned you back to Japan. You said in your letter it was something to do with that convict's loot we found in Mr. Natsume's lodgings? That's right. The very large dog collar we found with the B emblem on it. It seems Mr. Natsume included a drawing of the collar in the report he submitted about his time in Britain. I understand that when Father saw the report, he turned as white as a sheet. What would that be then? Father came to Britain himself, of course, to study. It was some time ago now, but he stayed for six years. I can only imagine that something must have happened during that time. But if he refuses to tell me what it was, then I intend to find the answers for myself. And I've decided that I, for one, won't keep any more secrets. Oh, Susie. Oh, I'm an open book myself, so there's that. There's a very meaningful look Susato-san's giving Iris there. Okay, well, tell me about the Forensic Science Symposium, please. Lord Strongheart mentioned something about that symposium, too. I think he said that investigative authorities from 40 different countries would attend. Yes, and from Japan, my father and Judge Ju Jigoku have been invited. Oh, the judge is coming over, too. Oh, and your father. Jeez, it's gonna be a party. It's something of an honor, I believe. Well, Professor Mikotoba is the leading expert in forensic medicine in our country, after all. I'm surprised you didn't travel together. But who's the other person you mentioned? A judge, did you say? Yes, His Excellency, Judge Seshiro Jigoku. You've met him, Mr. Nerodo. Last year, in the Supreme Court. You can't possibly have forgotten. No, shit, of course not. That was... I was defending myself. That terrible trial of yours, when you were accused of murder. Ah, oh, yes, I... I try to think of that as a positive turning point in my life these days. That uh, quickly led into Kazuma's death. <laughs> so yeah, very. That was the moment where my life got better. I suppose maybe we could have inched it a little bit further and say the turning point was when we arrived in Britain. Well, it was Judge Jigoku who presided over that trial. Yeah, he's all buddy buddy with your father. If I'm perfectly honest, I'd be happy never to see that man's face again in my life. Oh. Well, anyway, does that mean you're moving to Britain? You're going to serve as an attorney here forever? You're not going to come back to Japan and practice law? You're only here on a research mission, you know. <laughs> anyway, as Father was invited to the symposium, he agreed to me returning to Britain too. He won't actually arrive until next month, but... Well, I couldn't wait. So I pleaded with him, and in the end he agreed to me going on ahead. Yes, about the symposium. I don't care that you were so excited to come back to see me. I want to talk about the symposium. Sounds okay. Yeah. Put aside the fact that you are so eager to see me again. It seems as though Lord Strongheart has put in an awful lot of work to make it happen. It's obviously very important. I believe it is, yes. As I understand it, Lord Strongheart organized the entire event himself. I think he's hoping that by achieving exceptional results, he'll get the job of Attorney General. Okay, well, as long as he's not trying any funny business, you hear me? Because the guy does remind me of Damon Gant from... Uh, <laughs> the first day's attorney. Well, the DLC case, anyway. <laughs> the most senior position in the British justice system. He's hoping to use his power to create the world's finest policing institution. That's what Father said, anyway. Apparently, it's Lord Strongheart's lifelong ambition. Uh-oh. He's ambitious. Well, that means he's code for villain. Does Professor Mikotoba lo know Lord Strongheart personally, then, I wonder? Actually, Lord Strongheart gave me a long speech all about this very subject only yesterday. But I... I, I sort of lost the will to live early on, and didn't really listen to much of it. How trying for you. Yeah, oh yeah, I was clinging on to my life, you know, listening to all that shit. He kept me there for so long, thank god there was a fade to black. Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett. The woman whose unforgivable actions ended in me being wrongly accused of a crime I didn't commit. The murder of Dr. John H. Wilson. Yes, Giselle Brett. That's a name I won't forget for as long as I live. The extraordinary thing is, though, it seems it's a name we should all forget. S sorry Since the incident, our government's intelligence services have been investigating Miss Brett. But it turns out that an Englishwoman by the name of Giselle Brett didn't actually exist. D didn't ex ex exist? But how can that be? 
It was a pseudonym. Her real name was Shin. And she wasn't a visiting student either. That was a front. A front? Who, who on earth was she then? Miss A. Shin. Her name is literally all our in intelligence services have been able to ascertain about her. Nobody knows why or even how she came to be in Japan. A. Shin. Huh. Interesting. It's a complete mystery. But, but, but that makes no, no sense. It's no easy task to be accepted as a foreign student anywhere. What could the woman have been up to? I'm afraid I really don't know. The only thing we could be sure of is that she had some business in our country that we don't yet understand. Uh-oh. Hmm. Foreign intelligence, a spy, and now she's been killed. While all the questions surrounding her existence remain unanswered. I'm afraid so. A. Shin. Who on earth was she? And why do I feel as though... I've heard that name before somewhere. Was that one of the names that came up at the end of the Great Ace Attorney? I can't remember. Uh, it could be. Hmm. That's the only time I can think of where we may have heard that name. Right. What about Cosma? After my friend Ray's trial, the reporter who actually killed Miss Brett said something very strange. I know the truth! I know you had a hand in what went on! In that visiting student's fate! Nobody in Japan knows anything about it! They don't know that the guy never made it to England, that he died on that steamship, and that he'll never... Uh, yeah, he was quickly dispatched of, wasn't he? Obviously, I couldn't ask him to elaborate at the time. But later, I visited the man in his prison cell and asked him what he was going to say about Kazuma-sama. Uh-oh. Then what happened? And what did you learn? After he died on the voyage to Great Britain, his body should have been unladen at the port of Hong Kong and passed it into the care of the consulate staff there. Should have been? Well, it turns out that his body never arrived. Really now? It doesn't so happen to be walking and talking around here in Britain, does it? At the side of Van Zeeks? It just disappeared. What? Kazuma's body vanished? Our government tried to cover the fact up, it seems. They erected a grave on the cliffs by our hometown. Except, Kazuma Summer isn't there. Did you exhume the grave? To double check? D did, did, did Professor Mikotoba know about this? Yes, it would seem that he did. But he didn't tell me. They're still investigating what happened to Kazuma Sama's body as we speak. Oh boy. I. I. I just. I don't believe it. And what is this acute feeling of apprehension I have all of a sudden? It's because of the, the freaking hype up music's playing. Rinosuke? Come on, the Kazuma mystery. Let's go, let's chase this. All the way to the end. Thinking back now, some of the things that happened on the SS Burial were definitely strange. I mean, after he died, we never saw his body again, did we? It was a fake out. How? Is it? I don't know. C could it be? <laughs> is, the, is the game just trying to get my hopes up? Like, oh, Kazuma could be alive, and then they're gonna Actually, no, he was fucking dead all along. Yeah, we psyched. We checked you. Stop it, Mr. Naruto. It's too much to bear. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. Just thinking about the possibility pains me. So very much. Cast your mind back for a moment, Mr. Naruto. When Kazuma Sama was discovered, Mr. Shems was there, wasn't he? Ugh. And he definitely examined the body. I remember it clearly. Oh, you're, you're right. Unless he was paid off. Shomes has been very guarded in this part, hasn't he? I wonder if he knows something. So if Kazuma hadn't actually been dead at all, it would mean that Mr. Shomes had lied to us. But there's no reason why he would possibly have done such a thing. I... I suppose that's true, yes. Way to get my hopes up. The idea that he might still be alive somewhere. It wants to fill me with hope, but I can't let it. Because if it turned out not to be true... Then... I'd be back at the bottom of that awful pit of despair again. Oh no, Sisato, it's okay. I know, I know, I understand. I'm clinging on to hope, but there's every possibility that the game is trying to... pull a red herring on me. I'm... I'm terrified of what they might teach me. Oh, Mrs. Sato. 
I know she's given the idea the thought that it serves. It's Susato-san we're talking about, after all. So I probably shouldn't push it now. Okay, well, good catching up. That's everything. Uh, I suppose I should present some stuff to you. <laughs> should I? What should I present? I don't even know. Uh, the newspaper article. Let's start with that. About this paper, Mr. Sato, let me catch you up on what's been going on here in London. Yes, it's all about the Great Exhibition. I've been dreaming about it, Ine. I was sorry that you were going to miss it when you were called back to Japan. So was I. I felt desperately unlucky. But here I am, back in London while it's underway. It's a dream come true. Uh, perhaps you're not as unlucky as you thought then, even though kind of <laughs> incident took place there, so there's that. Once we've helped Professor Hairbrain out of this terrible situation, we should all explore it together. And of course, we must invite the Professor's good friend Lord Van Zeeks as well. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm sure he'd want to hang out. I mean, he always calls me his Nipponese friend, so clearly we're buddy-buddy. We're basically brothers. Your luck might not stretch that far. <laughs> okay, well, there's that. Hmm, what else do I present you? The experiment? Would you be interested in that? Mr. Sato, do you see? This! <laughs> you have such great expectation in your eyes, Mr. Narahode, but I'm afraid nothing particularly useful comes to mind at all. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm not sure what I was expecting, really. I was expecting you to just react to every piece of evidence I've got in my court record. Um, okay, well, we've conversed about everything, so clearly I need to present something. I don't think there's anything to examine. Although, now that Tusato's here, we might get some new dialogue. I'm so looking forward to making you some tea again, Mr. Narahode. Ah, well, I'm looking forward to drinking your tea, Susato. Which you'd think I wouldn't like, given that I'm not keen on bitter flavors. But it is Susato-san's tea. And it's amazing what a little cake or something on the side can do. I would dearly love to serve you some sort of Japanese sweet alongside your matcha green tea. But I suppose that's simply not possible, given how long we've been staying here in London. Oh yeah, our Japanese supplies have run out. Well, I do like the little chocolates you put with my tea. They go wonderfully. Hi, Mr. Narahede. He would, wouldn't he? It gives me a warm glow inside for some reason. God, these two are so adorable together. My god! It makes me sick! You have water gently boiling on the stove, I see. It feels wrong somehow if I can't hear the water bubbling away. It's my white noise. And we have plenty of logs. It's not like we have to worry about paying for gas. It's important to open the window for fresh air when the fire's burning, though. You can't keep it closed just because it's cold outside. It could be a matter of life and death. Uh, yeah, been there, done that, I'm aware. Avoiding the freezing winter air is a matter of life and death, too, if you ask me. Oh, well. Perhaps a nice cup of tea will warm you up later. It will, for about five minutes. You see, I've been keeping my desk beautifully covered in papers, as always. <laughs> You really must tidy it all up, Mr. Narahodo. No more excuses. Uh, you know, there's a method to the madness. I thrive in chaos. And now that you're here, the chaos shall remain because you constantly flip me over. But Mr. Sato, the way I see it, all these papers building up on my desk like this are a reminder of my wonderfully diverse daily life. I like to leave them as they are so I never forget how lucky I am to have such varied experiences. Yes. In that case, you should definitely have a thorough tidy. Then you'll be able to see your papers building up all over again and feel that joy renewed. <laughs> no, 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 no. We keep it as it is. I'm not keen to start over. Still can't beat her in an argument. Even though I'm the lawyer here. Hey, well, she's acted as a lawyer too. This thing. I see your Daruma still has only one eye filter. Well, we agreed that it's something we'd do together, didn't we? You can do it right now if you like. I'd be happy with that. I'd, r I'd rather like the anticipation, I think, Mr. Narahode. Oh, okay, so we're just gonna leave it there. Until, what, one day? Where you just feel like it? Uh, is there anything else to look at here? Anything on the ground? No. Treasure chest? Nope. There's the table. I left your desk completely untouched, Mr. Sato. So, it'll be ready for you when you whenever you return. Because, you know, you don't have as cool... <laughs> of daily experiences like I do, so that's why your desk is empty. It's beautifully clean. There isn't a speck of dust on it anywhere. 
you've been cleaning in my absence, Mr. Naherde. Whatever next? Uh, yeah, just cleaning your your space, obviously. <laughs> it's it's easy to just wipe it down, whereas my desk, I have to actually put some thought into where the papers go. Well, I couldn't allow my great assistant's desk to sit there gathering dust, could I? It really is exactly as it was when I left. I'm so touched. But sadly, your desk is also exactly as it was too. Well, that's how it should be after all. I'm hard at work and you're hardly working. Oh dear, I've forgotten how that clean cut smile can be so disarming. Oh yeah, here we go. My charming smile. That's how I win the judge over. And Van Zeeks. Maybe. Occasionally. Iris, there you are. Maybe you're the, the one that's going to advance the plot for us. It must be about a year ago now. I wrote a really long story based on some of my father's old notes. It's about one of Hurley's greatest exploits. I called it The Hound of the Baskervilles. But then Mr. Shums forbade you from publishing it. And put the manuscript somewhere nobody could get their hands on it. So nobody knows anything about it apart from Hurley and I. But for some reason, you knew the title of it, didn't you, Susie? That's true. Oh, it sounds so exciting. The Hound of the Baskervilles. I should love to read it. And you wouldn't tell me how you'd come to know it. Yes, but I made you a promise that I would explain one day, didn't I? I think it's time. Alright, cut the music! Cut the music. Here we go. Hey! It's that time! I'm only sorry I've had to keep it from you for so long, Iris. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Fill me in. It was completely by accident that I came to know the title of your manuscript, Iris. It was a short while before we left Japan. I was cleaning Father's study and I saw something on his writing desk. A large box of papers. There was a label affixed to the box that was written in English. It read... The Hound of the Baskervilles. What? My Baskerville story? It's a hit in Japan! Of course I had no idea what it was at the time. But Father came in and... Susato, what are you doing? Oh, Father... Did you look at those papers? No, I... I simply read the label, that's all. Mm. Well, put it out of your mind. Sorry? Forget that you ever saw it, and certainly don't tell anybody else about this. Do you understand? Hmm. A Herlock Sherm story ended up on his desk. A manuscript, anyway. But what was Iris's manuscript doing in Japan? Is that what he meant by like, hiding the manuscript somewhere no one would find it? He hid it back in Japan? I have no idea. But when I heard Iris mention the word Baskerville that day, the title just slipped out. I would never have guessed that it was an unpublished account of one of Mr. Shames' exploits. I don't, I don't understand, though. Why did you have to keep this secret from Iris? Couldn't you just say, like, Oh, well, coincidentally, I found out it was back in Japan where I saw this manuscript. You know? Why did you have to keep it secret? I'm sure there's a reason. I'm just, it can't come to my mind right now. When I returned to Japan, I asked Father to explain. But he refused to answer any of my questions. Maybe that's what she was waiting for. Maybe she was waiting for an explanation. And now she never got one, so she's all good telling her now. And there was no sign of the big box in his office. Huh. That's really all I know about it. How did it get to Japan? Was it, uh, Dr. Wilson who brought it over? Was it Sholmes who brought it over? Because he was aboard the ship. Yes, his burrier. I've no doubt that Father has a very good reason for being so secretive about it. But still, I made up my mind to explain myself to both of you. I was still in shock. Well, thank you for being so honest, Susie. Okay. So, Mikotoba. Definitely involved somehow. Far deeper than initially uh, thought. So, Mr. Narahoda, I'm ready to start investigating if you are. I've committed to every detail about the case to memory. And Iris has told me all about the disturbing happenings at the Waxwork Museum as well. So, are you okay, Susato? You, you kind of look scary, that face. You know, you look obsessed. So, you're fully abreast of the situation already, Mr. Susato? I'd expect nothing less, to be honest. 
I wasn't caught listening to your arguments, Dopey. I would think our first port of course would be to investigate this Mr. Drebber. The engineer responsible for building the elaborate machine that was used to effect this extraordinary trick. Yes, uh, Conjurer sweats by the sound of it. Well known in the fields of science and magic. Then we need to go and arrest him. Okay, we're, we're lawyers. Okay, I'm the lawyer. Actually, you're the assistant. We don't do any arresting. Yes, he must know the truth behind this case, so I agree we really do need to find the man. Mm, sounds like it's a case of tracking someone down. Which is a job for the police, or a great detective. Are we supposed to guess who she might be thinking of? We don't have much time, so we need to get started straight away, I think. I wasted enough time reminiscing about the good old days. Good idea. Well, best of luck then. Oh, you're not coming today? I've been replaced by Susato, clearly. I'm going to Brixton Road shortly for the herb market. Let me know later how you got on, won't you? Alright. That was a little abrupt. But all the herb market must be strong. <laughs> now she just doesn't want a third wheel. Okay, we can move. Let's move. I'm so glad we didn't have a uh, summation examination today. <laughs> I feel like they've been coming on hard and fast a lot of the time. So it was good to have it a little bit of an reprieve. A reprieve, sorry. Let's go to Shomes' suite. Might as well uh, go down here. Introduce Susata. Or reintroduce Susata, I should say. Shomes' suite, 23rd October. Nobody here. You can examine everything. I do like this fireplace. It's one of the best things I've seen since we arrived in the country, in fact. Although I do yearn for a Japanese kutatsu. Putting your legs under a warm blanket at the table is so comforting. I don't understand why this is... I mean, is this popular elsewhere? Because, man, they look comfortable, and I don't understand why it's not like a huge thing everywhere. Not like bidets. Do be careful, Mr. Naruho. Don't mistakenly put your feet in the fire, will you? You could suffer terrible burns, you know. Well, now that you're here, Susato, I won't do anything as stupid as that. Alright? You're here to guide me, and protect me from myself. Don't worry sometimes about how Susato-san sees me. <laughs> Like an overgrown toddler that can point my finger and say objection in a wildly uh, weak voice. Ah, yes, Mr. Sholmes' curious collection of trinkets from the various mysteries he's solved. It's one of my favorite parts of this room, full of items with such exciting tales to tell. And I do believe he's added to it since I last looked. Now there's a mysterious pin's name, mysterious little box, mysterious horseshoe, mysterious biscuit. I think that last one might just be one of Iris's unfinished snacks. <laughs> the hell is it doing there? Gosh, ruining his collection with all the crumbs and everything. The globe. There's all sorts of on these shelves. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and... Uh, well, lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high, I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. It looks as though it might topple, and yet it doesn't. The epitome of Mr. Shames' brilliance. I don't get it. How come that is brilliant, but my desk is stupid? As it happens, I'm quite well practiced when it comes to stacking shelves myself. I'm something of a shelf stacker myself. Just the other day, the shelf in my office finally gave way under the strain, though. Looks as though it might topple, and it does. Yes, the epitome of your disarray. I really don't get it. <laughs> Thanks, Isata, for your support, as always. Over here, violin. This is Mr. Shums' famous violin. The one he found being sold for a song at a pawnbrokery. What's it called again? A shoddy something? Oh yes, this wonderful instrument features in The Adventures of Herlock Shames. It's a world famous Stradivarius. St -st Stradi what? Stradivarius, Mr. Narahede. Stragi... Strike? Stragivor... Are you even trying now? We'll come back to this another time, I think. Let's circle back on it, okay? Let's put a pin in it. Put it on the wall. Over here. I finally managed to remember this behemoth's name. The Great Analytoscope. I don't think it was here when I left for Japan, was it? Oh, is that right? Yes. Because it was with the pawnbroker. Oh, of course. Oh, that's given me a wonderful idea. I could pawn everything that's on your desk. The office would be tidy at last. Don't even joke about it, Mr. Sato. That's my life experiences. You are joking, aren't you? I don't know. She seems rather serious, trying to get rid of all my clutter. Like my wife trying to get rid of all the things in my house that I'm... But I'm just such a hoarder and I don't want to throw anything away in case we need it for another day. 
got uh, the typewriter. If I remembered correctly, this large and imposing lump of iron is called a typewriter. To think that every single one of the adventures of Herlock Holmes blossomed from this very machine. Ah, it's such a dreamy thought. I actually had a go on it the other day. The metal bars that move when you hit the keys got all tangled up somehow, and th that made Iris angry. <laughs> Mr. Narahodo, you're ruining my dreamy thoughts. Please don't do that again. I'm sorry, Sato, I'll keep out of your dreamy thoughts. I mean, I thought I was like the main attraction in your dreamy thoughts, but apparently not. Apparently it's the typewriter. Ugh. Now it makes Sato sound angry as well. I've ruined her fantasy. <laughs> Over here, we've got uh, this blackboard is where Iris scribbles down her latest ideas, isn't it? Let's see. Oh, she seems to have drawn a little, lot of little stick figures all lined up. Look. Cheap apples at the market is what all of them say. What? The little figures can speak? All your questions would be answered if only you would read this month's Runs magazine. So I'm the only one who can't make any sense of this. Great. Just great. Iris's pretty little tea set is about set out beautifully as ever. Look, why is everyone so neat in this house apart from the men? <laughs> well, it's only by carefully taking care of a tea set that you can make good tea. Is that a roundabout way of telling me I need to tidy my desk? Oh, Mr. Narahodo, you do overthink things at times, but yes, fucking right. Clean your damn desk. <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry. I know, clean desk means a clean mind and all that jazz. That's Iris's wonderful collection of medicines, potions, and chemicals. Just look at all the little bottles she squeezed onto the shelves. Yes, and there are charming little ribbons tied around the bottles, too. But the labels aren't quite so charming, are they? This one here reads, Deadly Poison. Oh, I've been so excited about the idea of helping Iris with her experiments, you know. Just try to avoid any bottles labeled Deadly Poison or Highly Explosive. Keep it out of my tea, please. Okay, is that everything? I think so. All right. Time is of the essence, we've said, and we've wasted enough time at Shelms and Sweet. Let's quickly pay a visit to Lord Chief Justice's office. Is he present? He is. Oh, hello there. 23rd October, British Supreme Court. Lord Chief Justice's office. Oh, who's that standing beside Lord Strongheart? I wonder. I've never seen it before. Oh, I'm not taking up any of your time, am I? Oh, the young champion of the court. You had some success this morning, I understand. And you've thrown the entire government into disarray as a result. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, thanks for reinstating me. You... you mean because of Professor Harebrain's experiment? Sham science being demonstrated at London's Great Exhibition. The country's been made to look foolish, and now politicians are scrabbling to respond. Lord Van Zeeks is in Whitehall as we speak, giving an emergency briefing. Oh dear, I, um... I didn't mean to cause any trouble. None of this is your responsibility. The government is entirely to blame for having been taken in. The special dispensation that prevents investigation at the scene will be annulled later today. Once that happens, my forensic investigation team will move in and deal with that scrap metal in no time. It's scrap metal now, is it? Until later then, Lord Strongheart. Yes, thank you. Okay, well. Who the hell is that? Chief Prosecutor? Um, who was that? That would be my wife. No, <laughs> that was Dr. Courtney Scythe, Scotland Yard's esteemed Chief Coroner. She's leading the forensic investigation team's handling of this case. She was just delivering her report about the victim, in fact. Oh, I see. About Mr. Asbin. <laughs> Following the outcome of the trial earlier, I asked the coroner's office to reevaluate its findings. I don't have time to tell you what she concluded, but I did have time to tell you a whole bunch of baloney yesterday. If you want to know, you'll have to ask her directly. You can find her in the forensics laboratory. Ah, right. Now, what were you here to see me about? I was just giving Suzato the grand retour of London. I can give you 7 minutes and 39 seconds of my time. So he's not running quite so spectacularly late anymore. That's good. That means I caught you at a decent time then. Um, let's converse. The forensic investigation team. 
what exactly is the forensic investigation team that you mentioned before? What is fit? What is it like to be fit? <laughs> The British Empire's police force must become the most exemplary in the world. For that to happen, it's imperative that we embrace forensic science and everything it has to offer. I first created the forensic investigation team a year ago now. Unofficially, of course, to pave the way. Goodness, a year ago? At next month's symposium, I intend to present the results of their work to the world. Once I do that, the House of Lords will be powerless to oppose the creation of a full-scale forensics division. And once that happens, the position of Attorney General will be mine, and criminals will suffer dearly. I'm nervous about this, you know, I feel like you're trying to become Attorney General no matter what, and you may be an overzealous one at that to punish criminals. What do you mean? You're not going to follow due process, are you? For too long, those scoundrels have made a mockery of our legal system with false evidence and bribes. But London's scum is about to be rounded up and burnt in the fires of hell. You're the true reaper. I intend to see it personally. By creating the finest police force the world has ever known. To protect our honor and our future. Look at those eyes. It means every word. Dr. Scythe is an extremely reliable coroner. When I officially establish the forensics division at Scotland Yard, she will run it as my right-hand woman. Now then, speaking of the symposium, Miss Mikotoba. Oh, yes, my lord? Your father should be on the high seas as we speak, making his way here to represent the Empire of Japan. Yes, that's right. I understand he will arrive at the beginning of next month. Are you acquainted, Lord Strongheart? With Professor Mikotoba, I mean. It was many years ago now, but yes, I remember Dr. Mikotoba very well. Interesting. Good to know. You didn't exchange manuscripts, did you? If my memory serves, it was some 15 years ago now that your father came to Britain as a visiting student. It was the year I was born. So, yes, 16 years ago, in fact. Mikotobo was a young practitioner of forensic science, and Jigoku accompanied him as a young, promising judge. The punk to... The punctiliousness, the punctiliousness, there you go, and politeness of the Japanese at the time impressed us greatly. Not that I wish to imply impoliteness or carelessness on your part in any way. I didn't think that you were. Dr. Mikotoba studied forensics at one of London's large hospitals. Saint Sinners, if I'm not mistaken. Dr. Scythe was also there then, as it happens. Scythe or Sith? I'm just gonna, yeah, I don't know, it could be either way. Scythe sounds more deadly. <laughs> then Dr. Scythe knows my father, does she? She was a young medical assistant at the time, so I doubt their paths crossed regularly. But I've no doubt they knew each other superficially. After all, Dr. Mikotobo was here studying his subject for some six years in total. Six years. It's a long time to be studying abroad, isn't it? That means he missed out on the first six years of Susato's life? I lived with my grandmother in those years. So he left his newly born daughter behind and went overseas for six whole years? Jeez. It was a rather turbulent time at home. Oh. Perhaps father wanted a reason to get away. Yeah, I was thinking that, actually, as soon as you mentioned it was turbulent. What do you mean? Why? Um, well, clearly something was going on at the time. I'll read the room. Lord Van Zeeks. I wanted to ask about Lord Van Zeeks, actually. I heard that his older brother was killed some years ago. By a mass murderer known as the Professor, who targeted nobles and royalty, is that right? You Japanese are a thorough lot. You've done your research well. Yes. And you could say it was that very incident that gave rise to the Reaper. What? Why? You don't happen to be the professor, do you? When his brother, Clint Van Zeeks, was murdered, it was just after young Barack had graduated from the University of London and become a prosecutor. When obvious criminals who managed to evade conviction in court started disappearing, 
rumours quickly spread throughout the capital. London has started to say that wherever Barack Van Zeeks went, the ghost of his dead brother wasn't far behind. Oh my word. So... Lord Van Zeeks isn't the Reaper. It's the, the ghost of his brother? What? <laughs> Ever since that time, he became a very aloof figure in London's legal circles. I see. Oh, yes, Lord Strongheart. Go ahead. It's about Professor Harebrain's experimental machine. We'd like your permission to examine the remains, if possible. Just in time. <laughs> your time's up. Are you well versed in science, then? Not in the slightest. Uh, in fact, you could say I was barely aware of the subject at all until recently, but we've got Susato's blue book to guide us. Well, the special dispensation legally preventing investigation of the machine is currently being annulled. Within a few hours, Dr. Scythe's team of forensic experts will begin their own investigation. But I suppose until then. There's no harm in you looking at the wreckage, as long as you touch nothing. Thank you! Being able to look at it is better than nothing. And I'll be able to see it too. Your time is up. You'll have to excuse me now, I'm afraid. My next engagement calls. We are extremely sorry to have troubled you when you're so busy, my lord. I have important matters to attend to in preparation for the symposium, you understand. Alright, well, adios. Okay, let's move. The location has been added. The ex uh, forensics laboratory. Okay, yeah, let's go here. Let's meet our new friend. 23rd October. Forensics Laboratory. Laboratory. Whichever one you prefer. I believe this is it. Dr. Scythe's Laboratory. That chemical smell really assaults the nose. There's plenty to assault the eyes in here, too. It looks as though the doctor isn't here. We beat her here? But we're here now, so we may as well do some sightseeing, don't you think? What a seasoned tourist you've become, Mr. Sato. We could just have a little look around. Being careful not to upset any restless souls. Well, let's do just that. Uh, we've got the uh, gurney for the autopsy. Look at all these instruments. Skeleton, of course. Well, look at this. What a magnificent display case. The cherry wood has been polished to a high sheen, and the intricate carving is a joy to behold. Western cabinet makers really are very skilled, aren't they? Do you have nothing to say about the skeleton inside, Mr. Narahude? The, the what? Miss Susato. Can't you tell that I'm trying very hard to avoid talking about the terrifying contents of the case? It's how I cope! I'll be sure to remember that from now on. It was my fault for examining it in the first place, I suppose. I suppose this is Dr. Scythe's desk. Ugh. I would not like to work in a place like this. It's too clean. It's very tidy, though, isn't it, Mr. Narahide? Imagine how efficiently she must work. The lighting is poor, which is bad for the eyes, and the chemical smell. Oh, fuck. It can't be good for you. Not to mention the skeleton watching over you as you work, which is definitely bad for the nerves. And, you know, there's a bone saw here. What if my assistant gets angry one day and just cuts my head off? Well, yes, there's a valid concern, I suppose. I can just about cope with a one-eyed Daruma doll watching over me, but that's all. That's it, okay? That's my limit. Look at all the bottles on the shelves in these cabinets. What an assortment of chemicals. These ones here are labeled highly toxic. Uh, that's worrying. Because there are also things that look like salt and pepper shakers in there. Oh, yes! And they actually say salt and pepper on them. Uh, the doctor probably spends a lot of time in this room, I suppose. Perhaps she has meals here sometimes. Life goes on, even when you're surrounded by death. Yeah, I love eating my breakfast while I cut open someone and trying to determine their cause of death. Uh, over here. Those large jars seem to have pale things floating around inside them. I suppose they're fruit liquors or something. Or like the pickled uh, umiboshi plums we make back home. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's an intestine. Our father had jars like that in his laboratory as well. I expect they're human organs in a preserving solution. Probably as examples of some rare medical condition. Mr. Sato, there are some things in the world that it's perfectly fine never to know about. Ever. Oh! 
So as I said, I'm, I'm sure they're fruit lickers or uh, umeboshi, aren't they? Of, of course. Yes, totally. Okay, well, ignorance is bliss. That looks like an owl and a crow up there. I know. They haven't even twitched since we came in here. Well, no, they wouldn't have. They're taxidermy mounts, Mr. Narahide. Ugh, I was afraid you were going to say that. I've been trying very hard to tell myself they're just sleeping. With their eyes open. <laughs> yes, I think perhaps you were wise to put something like your Daruma doll on display in the office instead. Yeah, the Daruma doll that sleeps with one eye open, I guess. I think that's everything to look at. Alright, we're good to go. I guess we're going to come back here later on. Heading off to... Uh, well, she hasn't been to Madame Tuspel's. Let's show her the Waxwork Museum. 23rd October. Madame Tuspel's. Oh, God. I forgot. I have to put on my French accent again. Oh, my. No wonder it's called the House of Horrors. I'd like to turn on my heels and go straight home. Via the confectionery. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Now you need a coping mechanism, and I'm not going to make fun of you. Being scared makes you crave sweets. I can understand that. I was looking forward to a reunion after six months away, but there's no sign of Mr. Shames anywhere. That's strange. Should be here investigating the abduction of the waxwork. Maybe he's just well and truly in disguise. Oh well. I suppose we'll just have to come back again later. You missed our little dots of deduction, though. Unfortunate for you. We go to prison. Let's go to the experimentation stage. We've been given permission to examine the contraption. 23rd October, the Great Exhibition Grounds, Foot of the Crystal Tower. There we go. Ah, Lestrade and Susato. I had no idea there were so many people in the world. I know what you mean. It's really packed here today. Oh yeah, especially when you're like at an airport or something, especially when you're um, in transit in another country and you just see hundreds, thousands of people walking from all different countries around the world, trying to get to another country in the world, it's spectacular. Like, if you're gonna people watch, do it at the airport. It feels as though it's taken us two hours just to make our way through the crowds to this point. Has it? I shut my brain down so I didn't really notice, to be honest. I do that a lot. Gosh, I do wish I had your absence of mind sometimes, Mr. Naruto. I only use it when you're around, Sato, because you do the thinking for me. There you are. I had a feeling you lot would show your mugs before long. Oh. <laughs> oh, Inspector Gregson. Why the hell did you sound like the Strudges then? I see you're hard at work as usual. Warm greetings to you. I do hope you've been keeping well since we last met. What's with all the ceremony? Just saw each other in court this morning. Not you, sunshine. The gentleman's so loyal at your side. Hey. Oh. Why, thank you, Inspector. How good of you to notice. He might be a bit rough around the edges, but he's still a proper English gentleman at heart, I suppose. <laughs> As you probably guessed, we were hoping to investigate the scene some more. Right, well, that's the young trainee's domain. Oi! <laughs> I knew he was going to say oi. Get over here, Gina! Gina! Gina, bloody hell! She seems to be busy playing with a puppy. Probably giving it a traditional East End training. G Gina? She's a police officer now. Amazing, isn't it? She's a good kid, actually. Heart's in the right place, anyway. She's got the detection bug, if you ask me. Yep, I think she'll follow in my footsteps nicely. What do you mean? I'm being transferred. It's time for me to say to Ludlan. I know, really. Are you being transferred? What the hell? That, 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 that's a bit sudden, isn't it? I had no idea. Where are you going to be posted then? We'll come to see how you're getting along. I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> uh, not likely. But you're welcome to try. If you don't mind a trip to France, that is. Oh, no, 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 no. I can barely do one French accent. Are you telling me I have to do multiple? To, to France? I'll be working in the Paris Police Prefecture. Should be right up my alley. But, but, but France? It's an entirely different country. I don't understand. Why would you be sent there? That's the way the adult world works, Sunshine. No, don't go poking your nose in where it's not wanted. It's my retirement plan. I, I just can't say that out loud, because if I do, it's a death flag. 
I intend to take the kid with me when I go. What? You're taking Gina to Paris? Well, I can't leave her here in London. Who knows what would become of her? I suppose he's worried she'd slip back into slipping her hands into people's pockets and purses. Don't blame him. I don't think he's worried about her pickpocketing, Mr. Narode. I think he's worried about the Reaper. Oh, of course. So that's playing on Inspector Gregson's mind too, is it? Anyway, I haven't mentioned any of this to Gina. So don't go blabbing, you hear me? No, of course not. One dream of it. Gotta keep that diamond diva safe and sound. Until all this is over, at least. Gina, have you recognized this yet? Oi! Did you just call me a blimmin' diving diva again? So you heard that, did you? Right, well, any questions about the scene, you can put them to my capable detective diva here. Detective diva, huh? Alright, you heard the boss. Inspector Lestrade's in charge here now. I suppose I'd better keep my word and not mention anything about Paris. So, uh, Gina. Got a new dog, have you? What's his name, France? Oh, shit. Aw, oh, isn't he great? Toby's his name. Oh, how delightful. He's absolutely adorable. Yes, the dog does seem lovely. But it's the not-so-lovely Inspector Gregson that's playing on my mind, to be honest. What, no warm greetings for Susato after all that time? Sheesh. Investigating the scene. It's already flipped over. What's that all about? Uh, Gina... We were actually hoping that we could investigate the scene again. Yeah, alright. If it's around here, you can do what you like. Oh. That, that's alright, is it? I'm gonna be playing with my new friend here. Ah, yes, Toby. Oh. Yeah, Wolf at you too. The machine that exploded must be at the top of those stairs, I presume. I haven't actually seen it yet, so if you don't mind... Sorry, you can't go up there, Suze. Oh. It's like I told Odo yesterday. Even I ain't allowed near that wreck. What's it called again? The reason we ain't supposed to touch it? The Special... The Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. Is that what you were thinking of? That's the one. That's why only them lot are allowed to investigate it. What are they called again? The Forensic something? The Forensic Investigation Team. Is that what you're thinking of? That's the one, yeah. But isn't it the case that the special dispensation has been lifted? I think so. I don't really get it, to be truthful with you. He's still supposed to get permission from some bigwig or other, as far as I know. What was his name again? Um, Lord Strange something? Oh, that's why I flipped over, because we went to Strongheart first before we came here. So if we hadn't gone, then she'd tell us to go to his office. I'm not sure that's quite right, Gina. I think you mean Lord Strongheart, perhaps. That's the one, yeah, not Long Strongheart or anything of the sort. Apparently he's always watching the time or something. Actually, we've just recently been to see Lord Strongheart. Eh? You what? You met him? Last time the boss was called to go and see him. He waited for three hours at the cove's office and came back snivelling. Tragic. Well, Lord Strongheart has given us permission to examine the scene as long as we touch nothing. Oh yeah? Honestly, cross my heart and hope to die. Alright then, go ahead. But if it turns out you're lying, it'll be the boss who gets it. He'll never eat another chip again in his life. Well, well, yeah, you'll be eating french fries. So, you're still saying that all of this is above board, are you? I'm, I'm sure everything will be fine. That really would be tragic. Alright then, them's the stairs. Off you go. Oh, thank you, Gina. Hold your horses, Susato. Susato, we still got to talk about today's trial and Toby the dog. It was great, wasn't it? I had a right laugh. If it's a new one on me, that. You know, being in court and not spending the whole time worrying about I'm about to be found out. Yeah, it must be great being on the right side of the law for once. You did keep an awful lot of secrets in all your previous court appearances, didn't you? Yeah, I know those made things hard for me every single time and all. Just doing my job, Gina. Watching someone else get in the neck is a lot of fun, actually. It was amazing when you showed that dodgy professor's dodgy experiment was a total fix. The dodgy professor, as you put it, Gina, is Mr. Narahodo's client. 
Yes, I'm starting to wish he wasn't, though. <laughs> Even though it's my first time back in court after so long. It's the boss I feel sorry for. Set off to do the impossible. What do you mean? He's supposed to arrest that other cove, ain't he? And in time for tomorrow and all. You know, the dodgy engineer. What's his name again? Mr. Drebber, you mean? Enoch Drebber? That's the one, yeah. So the police are looking for this mysterious man with a black monocle. I guess they would be. He's putting too much on the boss, if you ask me. He says it's giving him gut ache. Oh dear. But I do wonder if that isn't actually from all the fried food. Could be. The engineer's whereabouts. So Scotland Yard are trying to track down Mr. Enoch Drebber. I wonder if they've had any luck. He's really funny looking. Got two eyes what don't match. Saw a glimpse of a picture of him earlier. I mean, I didn't actually pinch it or nothing. The old devil's got it. S sorry, who? You know, that Scotland Reaper what's always glugging down glasses of that blood red plonk. He's got a picture of what he looks like? I'm super keen to see. Ah, oh, Lord Van Zeeks. He's always had it in for me, that cove. Don't know what he's always scowling about mine. Probably would have been a pretty good boss as it goes. Should rather be the Reaper's apprentice than a detective's trainee. The way I see it. If the choice is between a chip guzzling detective and a chalice ch glugging demigod, you're equally badly off with both. <laughs> I suppose you're right. I hadn't thought of that like that. Glad we put that one to bed. Anyway, point is, everyone at the yard's dead set on finding the fishy engineer. But there don't seem to be no clues to go on, so they're stuck. There's nothing that can lead us to Drebber at all. Must be something. Toby the dog. Where did you find that little mutt then, Gina? Oi! Don't be so flaming rude, Odo. Slight overreaction, don't you think? He ain't no mutt, alright? Toby's... How do they put it? He's a dog. He's my dog. Oh yeah, a bona fide detective. Bone fide? Sorry? I've given him a proper title and everything. It's Chief Inspector Toby to you. More senior than Inspector Gregson, is he? <laughs> it's a superficial title. Naruto, don't worry about it. Ooh, so he's a police dog, is he? Police recruit dogs now? I've heard that they're already being used officially in Germany as part of their city policing. They're used for chasing criminals and such like. They have a wonderful sense of smell, after all. I have a fairly good sense of smell myself, as it happens. Am I a dog? I can tell undergarments that have been freshly laundered from undergarments that... haven't. And, well, Sasato, got some bad news. Just kidding. <sighs> That's nothing compared to this little fella, Odo. Oh, really? According to what the boss said, once Toby has got a good whiff of your drawers, he could chase that scent to the other side of the world. What? T to the other si side of the world? You mean, he can, he can swim? He can buy a ticket to board a boat? Mr. Narihoto, I think you may have missed the point by a rather wide margin. I just can't believe this little dog has such an incredible skill. So that's how we're going to find Drebber, huh? Find something that belongs to him. I'm telling you, Odo, there's going to be more and more dogs doing their bit for the police in the future. Yes, I agree. Right, one of these days, they'll be barking orders out of slot, not the other way around. Oh, I don't think they learn English in the next hundred years. Oh dear. Sorry, Gina, I don't think I agree with your vision quite that much. Well, anyway, whatever you think about that, Toby is Britain's first police dog. I found him down in the East End the other day. Someone had just chucked him out on the street. There you go. I knew you should lift him from somewhere. Oh, Gina, you're such a kind-hearted soul, aren't you? To children and to animals. Not to me. Okay, well... I guess we're heading up to the exhibition. Sato, it's your first time. Let's see what we can find out. 